Hello, Facebook land. It's a very hot day today, but I'd like to welcome you to another episode of The Voice Live with Sandy, where we aim to provide a platform for the voiceless and to promote empowerment and strength in both men and women who have faced with, you know, any forms of trauma, abuse, or challenges. We are here to support you, and today's topic will focus on surviving narcissism. Over the past two weeks, I've been trying to do this, but unfortunately, I had lost my voice. And as many, many of you know or are aware of, I, su I suffer from hypothyroidism, which occasionally leads to a sore throat. Anyway, a few weeks ago, we briefly touched upon this subject during the monthly meetup at Meet the Motivators, where I had the privilege of being a guest speaker. I will stop ever so often to drink water because it's very, very hot today. Yeah, so as I was saying, um, I was a guest speaker at Meet the Boat Motivators where we had the, like like we discussed uh, surviving narcissism. However, that discussion only scratched the surface. And today we will delve deeper into the team of surviving narcissism. So stay tuned for valuable insights and experiences as we explore this topic together. Your voice matters, and we are here to stand with you on your journey of healing and empowerment. Thank you for joining us today. So, surviving narcissism. It can be very challenging, but it's definitely possible. Dealing with a narcissistic individual requires patience, self-awareness, and the implementation of effective strategies. So I'm gonna, you know, talk a little, I'm gonna give you a few steps on how, how, to, how to help you to survive narcissism. The first one is to recognize the signs. Educate yourself about narcissism and its traits. Understanding the behaviors and patterns of a narcissistic individual will help you to identify them in your life. This awareness is crucial for pre protecting yourself. Second is to set boundaries. Establish clear boundaries to protect your emotional well-being. Narcissists often try to man manipulate and exploit others. So it's important to define what is acceptable and what is not. Be firm in enforcing your area boundaries and resist the urge to compromise your values because compromising your values um, is not enforcing your boundaries, if you know what I mean. The third is to build a support network. Surround yourself with supportive and trustworthy people who understands your situation and who will share your experiences you know, like an understanding. So share share your experiences with them and seek their guidance and comfort. Having a strong support system can most likely uh, provide validation and perspective during that difficult time. Um, you know, like I'm dealing with that right now um, where a very close person of mine um, is going through this and and building that supportive system and being supportive to that person is extremely important, regardless of their, their perspective or your perspective on things. Um, so, you know, on the other hand, if you are um, helping someone to get over these things, it's very important to, to listen and to validate the perspectives, you know? Um, practice self-care. Narcissists can drain your energy and your self-esteem. So it's, in, it's very essential to prioritize your self-care. Engage in activities that bring you joy and relaxation, take care of your physical health through regular exercises, um, proper nutrition, and set aside time for self-reflection and self-improvement. Then, you know, think about that, you know, self-reflection, um, you know, going through the things that, and, and self-reflection can hurt sometimes, and, and but self-improvement helps when, when you're doing work together. Maintain realistic expectations and recognize that you cannot change a narcissist individual. Focus on managing your own responses and your emotions instead. So accepting that the narcissist may never empathize with your feelings or change their behavior accept those things and adjusting your expectations will help you to avoid disappointment and frustrations. Develop assertive skills. A narcissist often try to control and manipulate others. 
through intimidation or guilt or even making you feel ashamed. So learn to assess, you know, the situation and learn to assert yourself confidently and effectively. Practice clear communication, stating your needs and your concerns without aggression or hostility. And this will help you to protect your boundaries and maintain your self-worth. The other thing is to protect detachment. Emotional detachment is um, a powerful tool. And when dealing with a narcissistic individual, detaching yourself emotionally means not taking their word or actions personally. Remind yourself that their behavior stems from their own insecurity. And it's not a reflection of your word or your value. So, you know, take that into mind. It's not a reflection of your word or your value. Seek professional help if you have to, and if it's necessary. If you find that um, it's extremely challenging to cope with a narcissistic individual, or if your mental health, mental health is suffering, consider speaking professionally to, you know, to a professional, um, like a therapist or a coach, you know. A therapist or a coach like myself can provide guidance, support, coping with strategies tailored to your specific situation. And remember that surviving narcissism requires strength and resilience. Focusing on yourself and taking care of yourself and maintaining healthy boundaries and, you know, and also, you know, remember seeking, seeking support and a supportive system. Um, you know, with time and effort, you can, you can protect your well-being and lead a fulfilling life, like I did free from the negative effects of narcissism. Um, escaping an abusive marriage is an incredibly courageous and empowering step towards reclaiming your life. Um, I've done it. I know a lot of women who've you know, gone through it. A lot of friends who have spoken about being in a relationship where it was very abusive and they were living with a narcissist and, um, and they, were, they had the strength and the resilience to do it. And if I can do it, with four children, you can do it too. So here's how I found happiness through various activities, such as volunteering, um, writing. You know, I wrote two books and I'm on my third book right now. Uh, painting, I love to paint. It just is so relaxing. And gardening. And breaking free from a, from an abusive marriage, I had I, I started journaling the challenges that I faced in the abusive relationship. And it took a lot of courage to leave. But I always remember the pivotal moment when I was myself and my well-being and to seek a life free from abuse. I always remember that moment when I knew that I could not stay in that relationship anymore. So I want to emphasize that the way how I found the strength and the resilience, it, it requires um, taking, you know, these steps um, towards that journey. So here are the steps that I took to help me through that journey. Discovering the, the healing power of volunteering. That was the first thing that I started doing. I started volunteering to teach dance and it played a pivotal role in helping me to survive that nasty divorce and that nasty fight for custody. Um, amidst all the chaos on the emotional turmoil of my divorce and the fighting for custody, Volunteering to teach dance became a beacon of light and a source of strength for me. Having always had that passion for dance and knowing that it's a transformable power, I decided to share my love for it with others who might benefit from the therapeutic qualities. I chose to volunteer at a local, like, like at, my, at my local temple in Pickering, and I started offering dance classes to children and even adults. And teaching dance was not only, it only, not only allowed me to, to give back to the community, but it also provided we, me with a much needed outlet for self-expression and healing during the difficult time. You know, the act of teaching dance, um, it became a form of a personal therapy for me. So as I guided my students through the movement and the expression, I found solace in the music and the rhythm and the artistry, and it allowed me the momentarily escape and from the stress and from the turmoil of my divorce and from fighting for custody. And I immersed myself in something that was so positive and so uplifting. 
and 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 I volunteer to do that, and I still volunteer. I've been volunteering for twenty five years now, so teaching dance also gives me um, that sense of purpose and the empowerment, and seeing the joy and the growth in the students as they discover their own abilities and their expressions, and helping themselves through the dance. It was incredibly rewarding, and witnessing the progress, especially when they were on stage. Um, it played a big part in 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 my journey as much as it played in their journey and brought a renewed awareness and a renewed sense of fulfillment and confidence that I needed at the time in my life. Um, and it also helped build the confidence in them as well. And additionally, being a part of dance in the dance community, it provided me with um, that supportive network of like-minded individuals who share that same common passion. So they, these were these were the dance moms that would be, you know, we would meet every Sunday, and and we would interact with each other through dance, and and through fellow volunteers. It gave me a sense of belonging and a camaraderie during the time when I felt isolated, or I could have felt isolated and emotionally drained. The emotionally draining part. Um, it was there, but being able to feel that I, you know, like not being isolated from from society and from friends and family, being in that community really did help me through a lot of things. So through through teaching dance, I learned valuable lessons about resilience, about determination, and the power of art and the healing that that you know that that was the healing tool that I needed, and it reminded me of my own strengths and the capacity for growth, and it strengthened um, my own well-being. It also served as a reminder that even in the midst of difficult situations and this difficult circumstances, there's always room for perfect personal development, personal self-discovery, and, and personal self-growth. So ultimately, volunteering to teach dance helped me to survive that nasty divorce and by providing an outlet for self-expression, um, a sense of purpose, a supportive community, and it allowed me to channel my energy into something positive and uplifting. And it gave me the strength and the resilience to move forward and to rebuild my life and my children's life with a profound confidence. And even a, I would go as far as saying that it was a joy of giving back to the community that gave me that sense of awareness and purpose. And it helped me to, to gain a lot of confidence. It reminded me that you know, I had taken something valuable to offer. And despite the challenges that I was facing in my own life, I was volunteering and helping um, the youths and the children through the platform of dance. And it utilizes my skills and my knowledge and the personal experience that, you know, it made it tangible and a difference in the lives of others. And to this day, I'm so proud that I was able to do that. And I was given the opportunity at the temple to be able to to find that outlet and to help people as well as I as I was helping my own self. Also, it it gave me a, you know a passion. It, it helped me to build that passion and that creative pos uh, positivity that changed myself. It, it it gave me empowerment. It allowed me to connect with people who understand and support in my journey. And um, and I'm not saying that everyone in the community was understanding of my situation. Definitely not. But for the most part, the people that I that stood by me were the people that supported me in my journey. And building the relationships with follow, fellow volunteers at the time and the individuals who served and gave me a sense of uh, belonging and renewed my faith in, in the power of humanity, uh, connection, resilience, and in the power of God. It really did help me to build myself. And so overall, Volunteering became a significant part of my healing and my personal growth. And it helped me to find a purpose in my own experiences and provided me with that positivity. And it, I had, you know, looking back now, I not only helped others, but also discovered my own renewed self of fulfillment and self-worth and belonging. And, and uh, I had never given it up. I still do volunteer to this day. And I don't think I ever will give it up. So the other thing that I also found was um, the, the solace in writing. Um, I never wrote to um, to write a book. I, I wrote, it became like a therapeutic outlet for me. 
So writing became like my sanctuary and it offered me solace and it, and it navigated the storm of emotions that were going through my head and my healing process. So it became like a very powerful tool through which I expressed my emotions, reflected on my experiences. And ultimately I found healing through journaling. So I want to describe how the, the, it impacted my my write, my writing, uh, you know, that journey of writing. In the midst of all the turmoil, again, through all the turmoil of facing uh, a nasty divorce, fighting for my children for many, many years, writing provided me with that outlet to release my pent up emotions, my thoughts, um, good and bad. Um, through writing, write, writing the words, I was able to pour out my heart. Um, express my pain, my anger, my confusion, even the moments of hope and resilience that I experienced, you know, I wrote it down. I wrote, I be, writing became my confidant. It allowed me to articulate and make sense of that complexity that was going on in my life and all the overwhelming emotions that accompanied my, my healing and my healing process. So through journaling, I embarked on a personal exploration of self-discovery. I dedicated my time on I'm reflecting on the experiences, analyzing the patterns of myself, patterns of others, the pe the people that were in my life, the good ones and the bad ones, the people who were fighting for, for custody. I, I started to analyze those patterns and the dynamics and of what was going on in my life. And I, I learned a lesson from my past and I still use those lessons to this day. Um, it allowed me to get clarity and perspective like writing everything down give you clarity and healing uh, he, you know it helped me to heal and made sense of the events that led to my healing journey so as I delve deeper into writing I also explore various genres and I started writing all kinds of different things I wrote poems I wrote literature um, and my journaling as well and I found a lot of solace in poetry where I would convey my emotions through metaphors um symbolism, rhythmic, rhythmic language, um, things that didn't might not have made sense to anyone, made sense to me at the time through my poetry. And it provided a creative outlet to express the depths of my emotions, the good and the bad, and, and communicated the instances of my experiences in a, in a unique and, um, I would say, evocative way. So if you read my first book, The Unwanted Wife, I did not hold back on my reading. I wrote what was in my head. And the good, the bad, the nasty, it was all there. And so writing that, basically, it was almost like a memoir. It became my writing project. And I started chronicling my journey from the depths of the pain to the path of healing. And it really did allow me to document my experiences, share my story, and to connect with um, with myself, you know, Um at the time, I, I, I didn't connect with others who were going through a similar situation. I, I kept everything to myself. I kept everything in my journal. And it became that empowerment process that I reclaimed through my voice, which is now voice, live with Sandy, sharing my truth and finding, you know, the healing through the self-expression. So I would say, you know, that was a big part of me healing my writing was a big part of my healing so in summary writing provided my solace it means you know it, it was a mean of, a means of processing my emotions and a pathway to healing and through various I, I get passionate when I talk about the writing because it's it's something that I had always wanted to do but I never had the opportunity to do it I also always wanted like I, I love art and I love drawing and I love painting so I also started painting and painting became a profound form of self-expression self as well and I find that through the colors like the I use vibrant colors from from for my paintings and I do a lot of abstract painting and through vibrant colors and the brush strokes and the textures I was able to communicate the depth of my emotions as well with you know turbulence to the serene and in my artistic endeavor, and I'm not saying like I'm a huge artist, I just, it was, it's just my hobby. I explored the various styles of techniques. Uh, you know, I started, I, it became an, another refu a refuge for me, enabling me to convey the complexity of my emotions and going through the fluid forms of, you know, 
bold strokes and the harmonious contrast of colors, abstract art allowed me to break free from the conventional representation of, you know, painting a landscape or painting someone's face. I, 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 it, it allowed me to break free from the conventional pr presentation of painting. And it gave me the freedom to explore the depths of my emotions without limitations. And so I delved into the world of painting and I discovered that each stroke, you know, became like a, a release of energy, a release of emotions. And as I was doing all this, I channeled my emotions directly into the canvas, allowing me to flow and transform. And the process of mixing paint and color, it's just like, it's like a therapy and experiencing the texture and, the, you know, the creation of making a beautiful painting and providing a sense of empowerment and, and liberation. So through painting, I experienced personal growth. And there was many times when I started with a heavy heart, burdened by the pain and the turmoil. But as I immersed myself in the, the act of painting, I felt a sense of liberation, like transformation. And I, and I started to let go of emotions and, and I embraced a newfound sense of peace and, and resilience through the painting. So painting also served as a mirror that, you know, it reflected my inner journey. And as I stepped back to observe the things that I had painted in the past, I saw the evolution of my emotions in those paintings and in the, the progression of my healing. So each painting became like a visual representation of my growth and the, test to my, the testament to my resilience. I still have some of those paintings. I don't have all of them. I still have some. And people would look at them and they would say, what, what does that mean? Like what, like, what are you trying to say? And I go, that was just my emotion. I tapped into my creativity, I channeled my emotions and I found the joy in painting. And that's my personal milestone, milestones. And I would never get rid of those paintings because it was like my growth. And you can see from, from my paintings of 20 years ago to the paintings that I do now, there's a big difference in my expressions and the authenticity of discovering that inner strength and that inner serenity. Uh, so try it sometimes. You don't have to be perfect. It's just do what you want. Painting is art. It's your ex expressions and your emotions. So try it. it. You know, it's I love it. I love mixing colors and, you know, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be something that you see in a gallery or, or a, 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 you know, in a store. It doesn't have to be something that anyone would appreciate but you. And then the other thing that I found too was gardening. I love to garden. Gardening became much more of a hobby to me. It became a profound source of solace and re rejuvenation. So um, I stepped, I would step into my garden and I surround myself with the vibrant colors. I, I like colors and scents and the nature and, and grass. But it offered a, like a, a, like an outlet from the stress that I carried. And I taught my kids how to, to plant and to, we, each of them had a little, you know, they named it after themselves or or their friend. And it became a place where we would go to immerse ourselves in the present moment and to find that peace and that calm. Nurturing plants actually um, and watching them grow, it is a joy and a satisfaction. Witnessing the tiny seeds sprouts into, you know, striving plants tends to remind me of myself or, or my kids and it tends to, it, it, it's standing to our knees and we're witnessing the transformation, you know, of the plant and, and how it's growing. Gardening allowed me to connect with the, the cycle of life, witnessing the beauty and the resilience of nature firsthand, right? Uh, creating beautiful landscapes with my garden allowed me to exercise my creativity in that sense as well. Um, and yes, I am quite, I, 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 I would say I'm a very creative person. I love art and I love um, any for any form of art. So I give, I would carefully arrange my plants um, in color coordination and color combination, design my own harmonious space. I found a way to express my artistic artistic abilities through gardening as well. And it became a form of self-expression as well. And, and it brought me immense satisfaction. So I would say that I shaped and more environment with uh, gardening, with painting and writing 
and you know and i did that self transformation um as a power of self discovery and it helps with personal growth it helps with you know transforming my comfort zone uh, learning new skills and expanding my knowledge i also used to um love to sew so i used to make a lot of um drapery i did, i would do drapery i would do my own um bed sheets and pillowcases it was it was my form of development and ex expanding my horizons and and building my resilience and and i also inspired others i i help others to make uh like um uh, baby blankets and things for you know when people are getting a new one in their home i helped with that as well to create things that were pleasant and she, and so yeah and i would honestly say i share all my stories openly and honestly and um i'm and, and briefly right briefly sharing my personal experiences of abuse i created a space for others to uh to relate and connect to my journey and and sharing the details of my own struggles and my own emotions and healing process demonstrates vulnerability and authenticity and so i would say offering like i try to offer support and encouragement i share my story that way so that i can share you know i can offer that encouragement to others uh, i don't hold back on my story and i don't um i'm not ashamed of it i I provide uh, support and encouragement to those who want who feel that they're trapped in in an abusive situation. I I try to offer empathy, understanding, validation of their experiences, just like my own, and letting them know that I have been through similar experiences, and that I have found a way to heal, and to move forward, and and hope that you know my strength and my bravery and my resilience can you know somehow. Um, you know, maybe rub off on them or make them feel a little bit more positive in changing their their own lives and, and seeking, you know, help and making that supportive system as well. I try to be the advocate for change, you know. And so by sharing my story publicly, um, I contribute to awareness and the prevalence and, uh, of, and the consequences of abusive relationship. You know, it helps others to recognize the signs of abuse Sometimes people are in a situation and they don't even realize they're in, a, in an abusive situation. So, you know, understand the dynamics involved and, and I try to encourage them to, to take actions. So through my um, advocacy, I can promote education, uh, preventation, um, in, in inter intervention and initiatives that aim to support others who are affected by abuse and work toward creating a society free from abuse. That's my goal. Yes, I said it. We're trying to, or I'm trying to work towards creating a society free from violence and abuse. Yeah, right. Not in my lifetime, you say? Let's see about that. <laughs> I try my very best to do that. My personal journey, I feel it can inspire others to become advocates as well. So to change it, you know, it becomes a broad, broader concept and a broader context of addressing abuse. And I can change in activism, join support groups, organizations, collaborate with professionals like I did with Meet the Motivators and, and experts in the field. Uh, so leveraging my own story, I can prov you know, contribute to the policy changes, if there's any, um, encourage funding and you know, support for people who need the services to empower survivors of abuse. You know, I look back at my my story, and that was so many years ago, where um, domestic violence was not as, um, it wasn't taken seriously as it is today. And, and I'm so, like, you know, if we keep working at it, it will only get better and better. And I can inspire and empower others who might help me to, you know, to evolve and, and to get more support and, you know, who, helping others to who might be you know facing all these similar challenges my voice and my actions hopefully can make a significant difference or difference in the in the lives of others who are trapped in abusive situation and helping them to find the strength and resources needed to break free and build a brighter future so by explaining my path from an abusive marriage and finding happiness through volunteering writing, painting, gardening. I hope that I can inspire others to seek their own paths to healing and fulfillment. 
And my story serves as a powerful reminder that even in the face of ad adversity, it is possible to rebuild and create life filled with joy, purpose, and self-discovery. So I thank you so much for joining me today and for um, and for listening to my very lengthy um, thoughts and and reflections on my past. And I hope that we can work together to make this a better world for everyone. Thank you so much. 